Here's a car question for you. What do a Reliance Scimitar GTE, a Datsun 240Z, and an Alfa Romeo 2000 GTV all have in common? Apart from the fact that they were 1970s sports coupes to have. All three of those cars appeared in a marketing campaign by British Leyland in 1973, apologising to the owners of said 70s coupes for ruining their day by bringing out a revised version of the MGB GT. By this time though, the MG purists felt that the Pininfarina styled coupe had had its day. So the company put in a bigger engine and upped the marketing budget. But despite this, it was a very optimistic marketing slogan. There was a time though, that the MGB GT commanded respect in all motoring circles. And as a classic car, that time has come around again. 1971 may have been a messy time to be making the drinks in the BMC boardroom, but the MGB GT still did what it had done so well at the launch in 1965, offer a more refined, practical alternative to arguably the most iconic British sports car ever made. By this time, of course, nothing British Leyland touched was turning to gold. But then, perhaps they'd have stood a chance if they had actually touched something. As a stablemate to the MGB Roadster, the GT still worked. It was only when you looked outside at what was coming from Europe and Japan that you realised the stable door had been left open, even if the car was about to get overdrive standard across the range. What this car needed was a bit more than just spec sheet engineering. In 71, British Leyland was split up into Austin Morris and the so-called Specialist Division, which included Rover, Triumph and Jaguar. Despite the fact that the MG range only included sports cars, it wasn't deemed specialist enough to sit alongside the flagship brands. Had the company's management lost interest in the people's sports car, or did they simply overlook it? Either way, what followed was a desperate struggle by Abingdon to change the spec and transform the image of the BGT, when surely a drawing board session was what was needed to keep the car in the minds as well as the hearts of an ever more sophisticated motoring public. That's all a bit depressing, really. What you really needed to know in 1971 is that you had a speaker that looked like a direct line to Tracy Island. When you think about it, there isn't anything not to like about this 1971 MGB GT. A talky 1800 B-series engine with a bark of twin SU carbs, a comfortable, if sparse, cabin with rear seats, ish, all bolted to a sturdy monocoque chassis with Pininfarina styling on top. And that's the point. The MGB is arguably the very definition of classic motoring, an archetypal British sports car that takes roads and makes them fun. And the BGT completed the picture, meaning that MG could offer something for everyone. And don't get concerned with the trade-off between top speed and sprint time owing to the differences in weight and aerodynamics between the two MGB variants. Simply ask yourself this, do you want a roof or don't you? Because let me tell you, as a petrol head, as a self-respecting petrol head, you should at least at one point in your life want an MGB. If that MGB GT could talk, it would point at that optimistic marketing slogan from 1973, and it would say, bring it on. It would. <laughs>